In this episode, I'm going to show you how to use Python to retrieve the candlesticks that you need for your strategy from Binance. There's a few things that you need in order to complete this episode. The first thing that you really need is to make sure that you've got a connection to Binance that allows you to use their REST API. If you don't know how to do that or you're a little bit stuck, check out my previous episode where I sh show you everything that you need in order to connect to Binance. The second thing that you need is to make sure that you've got pandas, which is a Python library installed. If you don't know how to do that, just run pip install pandas and you should be good to go. Let me know in the comments if you've got any dramas. I've put links to everything I've referenced below. In the previous episode, I introduced you to the concept of the Binance underscore lib, basically our own little pseudo library. And in this episode, we're going to take that library and use it to implement the functionality we need to get the candlesticks. So head over to binance underscore lib.py and scroll down to the bottom of the page. You can see there how I'm pointing out that you could also do this on MT5 or alpaca.markets, basically any exchange that you want to implement. All right, so at the bottom of our binance underscore lib.py, we want to create a function to get the candles from Binance. That's really what this episode's all about. And we're gonna call this get underscore candles. That's the name of the function. And if you were to have a look at my MT5 episodes, if you were to have a look at some of my other code, you'd see that I use the exact same function name in all of my different little pseudo libraries that I create, making this uh, bot super expandable and easy to add extra functionality to. Now, as you can imagine with symbols and timeframes and candlesticks, we only really need three different variables in order to define what we want. We need the symbol, which is going to be a string of the symbol name. Maybe if we're using Binance, that might be something like uh, BTC, BUSD, or BTC, USDT, whatever you want to be uh, testing. Then we need to know the time frame that we want uh, to apply to the candlesticks. Uh, so that might be like 30 minutes or one hour, six hours, one day. And then we want the number of candles that we're going to retrieve. And uh, you can get up to 1,000 in one go from Binance. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later in the series when we get to our backtesting uh, as to why you might want to expand that uh, in the future. As you can see, I've fully uh, commented my functions. I do that with all of my code. Um, that's really important. That's like a love letter to future you saying this is what I did and here's why it matters. And if you don't do that, you just basically end up spending a lot of time figuring it out in six months' time. All right, so here's a pseudo code of what we're going to be doing for getting our candlesticks. First of all, we need to set our time frame so that it's consistent across our entire program. Now, why this matters is because if you're using something like MetaTrader 5 and then you want to move to Binance, they actually define their candlesticks in different ways. For instance, on MetaTrader, one minute is M1, uh, uppercase M, uh, M1. On Binance, it's 1M with a lowercase M. You get that wrong, the exchanges will be confused. And so we're just going to use the get data function to normalize uh, that query so that we can just continue to add extra functionality to our trading bot. Then we want to make sure that no more than 1,000 candles are retrieved at any one time. Um, that's a hard limit that's imposed by the Binance API. So we just want to catch it in our code before we start getting error messages from Binance. Then we want to retrieve the candles. <clears throat> and then we want to format the candles into a really consistent uh, way so that they look the same no matter what exchange we're querying from. We'll be adding things like the human time, which converts the Unix time into an actual date timestamp. And then finally, step number five, we want to return that data frame back to the user, back to our program so that we can actually uh, use it. So step one, let's look at converting the time frame string into a really consistent format. And I'm going to do exactly what I do for all of my different exchanges. We're going to create a separate function that actually does that for it. And it's going to implement what's called an if else statement uh, in, in Python to do that. Now, for more advanced programmers, you'll realize that this could probably uh, use a switch statement, which would be super handy. Unfortunately, in Python, that didn't actually get implemented into until Python 3.10. So in order to keep it sort of backwards compatible, I've just chosen to go with the if else uh, elif kind of pattern to get that done. So here's the function. We're going to call it set underscore query uh, underscore timeframe. And then all we do is we pass it that timeframe string. 
I've done this in a way that's called Pythonic, which means I'm just stating exactly what I'm going to do. You'll see some programmers, you know, they might think that it's really clever to put like really unreadable variable names like A, B, C. When we're doing it in Python, it's actually just helpful just to call the variable what it actually is. So in this case, we're going to call our function set query time frame, and the variable is going to be the time frame that we want to convert. Adding in my comments there uh, to tell us what the function is going to do. And all this function is going to do is to take a string uh, that defines the time frame for the candlesticks that we want to retrieve, and it's just going to return it in a format that's consistent and recognized by Binance. We'll also use this function to do a little bit of error checking so that if you try to retrieve a, a time frame that Binance does not support, it returns an error back to you with that information rather than, you know, going ahead and querying the Binance exchange and getting an error from there and sort of wasting your time and some of their time as well. You can see there, I've put a link to the Binance documentation about the timeframes that they support. And you could absolutely, if you wanted to, go ahead and like calculate your own timeframes uh, if you wanted to. Pandas is very efficient at doing that. Uh, I won't cover that uh, in this episode. So here, I'm just going to show you a couple of different sort of things that you need to do to do it. And then I'm just going to copy paste the rest of the code in there. It's a lot of code to write. And really, once you understand the, the different timeframes that I'm doing, the rest of it is really just typing it in. So it's easier just to copy paste it. If you want to copy paste it for yourself, head off to the GitHub repository, which is in the, um, that's in the links in the description, uh, and you can just do the same for yourself there. Okay, so you can see there, Binance supports one second, which I thought was pretty cool. Haven't actually used it myself yet. And there's the rest of them. And right down the bottom, you can see we raise an error if an unsupported time frame is passed into this function. So our step one is now basically complete. Let's fill in the code for that. Step two then is throwing an error or raising an error if we try to retrieve more than a thousand candles. Now, why this matters is because if you ever look at something like MetaTrader 5 where you have a client on your endpoint, if you re you can retrieve up to 50,000 candles and in reality, I've made it go up to 8 million with a few sort of different uh, pieces of, of modifying of it. When you're working with a REST API, which is internet based, they're putting hard limits on how many candles you can retrieve. So you can only retrieve a thousand. And it's really in your best interest to make sure that you catch that error before it goes to the API. And so we just put a little error in here just to catch that. Okay, now we want to go ahead and retrieve the candles. To do this, we're going to use the API client. And in the previous episode, I showed you how you could log in using your API and secret key. <clears throat> For candles, you don't actually need to have your API key and your secret key. You can just query the cl client directly for those thousand candles. So we'll just put in the spot client and we're just going to initialize that class with nothing in there, no API key, no secret key. Retrieve the data. Okay, now Binance calls their candlesticks clines or K lines. If, uh, for anyone who's watching my editor, you'll see how it's doing some pretty advanced code suggestions. I've recently been trying out the Copilot um, based on chat uh, on the GPT uh, 3.5 model. Um, i got to be honest, I find it pretty good. Uh, it does throw some pretty funny errors, though, so not, not quite there yet, but it's pretty awesome. I might actually do a review on it sometime. If you want to hear my thoughts on it, just drop a note in the comments, and, uh, and I'll, I'll put up a video review for people. 
Okay, so we've retrieved our candles. Now we want to convert that into a data frame. And the reason we do that is because data frames are really, really easy to work with in, uh, in Python when it comes to analyzing data. They're just really efficient. They're really straightforward. And honestly, like most data scientists will use data frames to do some of the complex things that they do. And to do that, we need to import pandas. Now, my IDE, which is PyCharm, did that automatically. Yours might not. So you may need to just go up to the top and import pandas into this. Now we're going to convert, uh, sorry, now we're going to format our converted data frame uh, and make sure that all of the columns and everything are labeled. And we're going to add a couple of extra columns in there just to uh, make sure that um, they all work. And here I'm posting a link to the documentation on the Binance API, which tells you what each of the different columns are that come through. And if you were to print the, the, the raw data frame before you do any of these column renames, you'll see that it just labels them with a number. So basically it comes through with, you know, column zero, column one, column two, column three, column four, et cetera, et cetera. We want to turn that into more human readable and also consistent with the rest of our program so that we have like open, high, low, close, volume, and so on, time. Okay, and there I just copied and pasted the rest of them, you know, um, like I said, no point sitting here while I type it all out when I can just copy paste it in. Okay, now we're going to add in a human time column. So what this does is when you get the time from Binance and most exchanges, it comes in what's called Unix time, which is basically just an integer that's really long, counts the time uh, from 1970 upwards uh, in, in, well, depending on what it is, but like uh, MetaTrader uses seconds, Binance uses microseconds. So we want to convert that into a date time object, much easier to use, much easier to chart, and honestly, much easier to read as a human. And we finish up by returning the data frame. Let's bring that candlestick data straight into our main function so that we can continue to analyze it in the next episode. So we're going to do that in our main function, which is in main.py. We go back to here. So we go candles is equal to using our Binance library. So Binance underscore lib dot get candlesticks. Then we pass it our symbol which I've decided we can use the BTC USDT, our time frame, which is going to be H1 because we want to retrieve the one hour one. And then we want our number of candles to be in this case, a thousand, just, just because we can. And let's print it to the screen. Okay. Now this is pretty cool, but realistically, we really want to make sure that we've got all of the columns that we need and we need to make sure that they make sense. So, you know, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to our, my main function and I'm going to just create a little option in there that tells pandas to display all of the columns. That's it there. And you can see there, I need to import pandas. So I'm going to go up here. It's not a custom library, so I'm just going to import it up the top there. Then I'm going to play again. Okay, now you can see all of the columns that pandas provides. So we've got our time, open, high, low, close, volume, close time. Okay, quote, asset value, volume, sorry, number of trades. Pretty much anything you can think of is in there. We've done a ton of work getting our trading bot ready to trade. 
So in the next episode, I'm going to show you how to calculate the RSI indicator on the trading bot as we get ready to implement our trading.